Now, before we talk about which numbers are rational and which numbers are not, we need to recall something about the relationship between fractions and decimals. So recall, any terminating decimal, one that only has so many digits, is shorthand for a certain kind of fraction, a decimal fraction. For example, if I have the decimal 3.1415, that's shorthand for the fraction that has just these digits, 31415, in the numerator. And then as its denominator, I see one, two, three, four digits after the decimal point. That means I'm going to have one, two, three, four zeros in the denominator. So the decimal 3.1415 is a shorthand way of writing the fraction 31,415 ten thousandths. Any fraction can be written as a decimal using long division, and it'll either terminate or form a repeating pattern. So for example, 3 fourths, I can divide 4 into 3.00. 4 goes into 3 zero times. 4 goes into 37 times, because 7 times 4 is 28. Two left over, bring down the zero. Four goes into 25 times, nothing left over. Three fourths equals 0 0.75, a decimal that terminates. On the other hand, if I take, say, 5 twelfths, and I divide 12 into 5.000. 12 goes into 50 four times. Two left over, bring down a zero. 12 goes into 20 once. 12 goes into 80 six times. And now I see my remainders repeating over and over and over again which means that this digit 6 is going to repeat over and over and over again. 5 twelfths is 0.416 with the 6 repeating. This repeats. And remember, the remainders will always repeat because there are only so many numbers available less than 12. Now, previously we claimed that any repeating decimal can be written as a fraction. We saw how to make the calculator do it for us, but now we need to see how to do it ourselves. Let's make up an example and see how we might do this. Given any repeating decimal, how can we write it as a fraction? Let's make up an example here. Let's say we want to write the repeating decimal 4.137 repeating as a fraction. Okay, in order to do this, there is a fact that we need to recall. Multiplying a decimal by a power of 10 moves the decimal point one place to the right. So my 4.137, all repeating. That's 4.13737, and so on. If I take my 4.137 repeating times 10, that has the effect of moving the decimal point one place to the right. So I have 41.373737, 3, etc. 
Okay, nothing really good happened there. What if I take 4.137 repeating times 100? That's 413.737337. Okay, let's take this middle row and ignore it. Notice what happens. This column, these first several columns are different, but after a while, all the digits line up exactly the same. If I take the bigger number minus the smaller here, in this column I'll get 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And the same thing with all the columns off to the right, because they're going to just continue this pattern of sevens, threes, sevens, threes. These columns are actually interesting. Seven minus one is six. Uh, three minus four I have to borrow. I get nine. I get 409.6. What does this have to do with my problem? Check out what happens if I take this original fraction and call it x. Then when I multiply it by 100, that's 100x. What we've just seen is 100x minus x is 409.6. What? If I combine like terms here, 99x is 409.6. Divide both sides by 99. I get x is 409.6 over 99. But wait, you complain. That's not quite a fraction yet. No, you're right. That's not quite a fraction. But if I multiply my numerator and denominator both by 10, I get 4,096 over 990. That's a fraction. Let's see if that really worked. On the calculator, I'm going to take 4096 divided by 990. 4.1, and then the pattern 37 repeating. If I really want to simplify that fraction, I can do that too. Looks like I had a common factor of 2. But this fraction is perfectly acceptable. So what do we do? To write a repeating decimal as a fraction, let x equal your repeating decimal. Then, multiply by a 1 followed by as many zeros as there are digits repeated. Then subtract and solve for x. Let's see another example. Say we want to write the decimal 0.513 repeating as a fraction. We'll let x equal 0.513 repeating, which is 0 0.513513513, etc. Then, okay, it says a 1 followed by as many zeros as there are digits repeated. Here we have three digits repeated, so I want to take a thousand x. Right, so that's 0.513 times 1,000. That's move the decimal point three places to the right. So 513.513513513 and so on. Now it says subtract. 1,000x minus x 
is 999x, and that equals, well, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And then 3 minus 0 is 3. 1 minus nothing is 1. 5 minus nothing is 1. That gives me the equation 999x equals 513. Divide both sides by 999 and I get x is 513 over 999. In other words, 0 0.513 pattern repeats is 513 over 999. Now this is a cool trick by itself, but it proves something. The fact that we can always do this for any repeating decimal shows that every repeating decimal can be written as a fraction. In fact, here are directions for how to do it. That means that every repeating decimal is a rational number. Every repeating decimal can be written as a fraction.